So, what's up, guys? So, something that I had noticed that went by the wayside uh, before uh, I ended Season 12, I had uh, ended up finding some information about, a re about something that concerns Edward Snowden. Now, for those of you who've been living in a cave or don't know who Edward Snowden is or anything about the background. Let me give you a little background information just to recap. Uh, Edward Snowden was the NSA contractor that was uh, uh, that exposed Lee, uh, exposed uh, the mass surveillance program going on um, by the United States government. The fact that they were violating our constitutional rights, spying on us. Generally stuff that a lot of had been seen as conspiracy theories and had just been kind of, you know, brushed aside by the general mainstream uh, up until Snowden basically showed, yeah, the U.S. government's up to some shady shit. And, uh, so, basically exposed this information and, um, and essentially tried to open the American public up, the, the American public's eyes up to the um, to the realization that the American government w has been committing crimes against its own people, the same sort of stuff that even PFC um, that Private First Class Chelsea and Manning uh, had had done in exposing the U.S. war crimes going on in Iraq and Afghanistan, and of course you know the same rhetoric coming around from military and government officials and nationalistic americans you know or you know the people going around with the flags on the truck going america you know those idiots they're the people that have been calling them traitors and you know all sorts of names and stuff like that but it's one of those things where it's about ready to get a lot more complicated because uh... Number one, first of all, Edward Snowden uh, fled to and has been living in Moscow, Russia, in an asylum for the last couple of years. Um, same like Julian Assange did um, over the WikiLeaks thing. Um, but anyway, like I said, things are about to get a lot more complicated um, because the European Union has voted to drop any charges against Edward Snowden and is now pursuing trying to give him political asylum. Yes. Now, while I am kind of skeptical of a lot of this, considering the EU, NATO, you know, Western sort of thing going on, the, the coziness between them, uh, yes, it, it does appear they are looking for legal protection to prevent him from being extradited, which would allow Snowden to freely move about um, most of Europe you know, the EU countries, which uh, I think would be funny considering that a lot of this is probably coming from the fact that Germany's not too happy that, you know, we were spying on them and uh, a few other countries as well. So, yeah, essentially the EU is telling the U.S. to, go, the U.S. government to, well, go fuck itself. And I think that's absolutely hilarious. Because, frankly, you know, I am a person that believes that what Snowden did was necessary. I believe that, you know, that I'm not necessarily a person that believes in violating the law, but I believe that that the law is there, the law is only there to serve the interests of the people that are trying to rule over that particular culture, that particular society, that particular population. And so... And basically, it's we could kind of take a uh, take into account something like the uh, Socratic um, logic in it, in the idea that uh, you enter into a contract with that society, and um, you know if you don't want to obey the laws, then you're free to leave that country. And technically, that is what Edward Snowden did because he knew that what he did um, in the eyes of the ruling class was not something that they would like very much, and so he felt necessary to flee the country because he did not believe 
it, what they were doing was right, and in all aspects, what they do, are doing is not right. Um, now, some will argue, well, it's about national security. Yeah, well, considering that mass surveillance has actually proved very little in getting any sort, in preventing, it, it, it's done very little in preventing terrorism, it, the mass surveillance is rather unnecessary, and so, you know, the, the argument's rather invalid. Um, so it's the whole idea that, um, you know, it's that Socratic idea that, uh, that if you, that if you flee, you're basically, um, you're, you're, um, basically you're, you're essentially throwing away the, the, the rule of law and it's, uh, and it somehow, and that harming the state somehow harms the people. But I make the argument that when the law, when that particular law is that the, you know, that particular law, bourgeois law, the, the ruling class law in this case being the U.S. government's, um, you know, law or, you know, in saying you can't expose information about us because, you know, we don't, it, national security, national security. Yeah, the, the whole argument of national, sec, you know, matter of national security, the, the uh, age-old cry of the oppressor. And so, when basically that law begins to harm the people, when that law basically begins to infringe on the rights of people, so whether it harms them directly or harms them indirectly, not saying that they necessarily have to brutalize their people, although the U.S. regime does do that too. You know, the fact that the law does harm the people, it then becomes necessary that a person disobeying the law then actually can become a justifiable means. So, in what Snowden did was actually was actually warranted. What pri Private First Class Manning did was justified. What Julian Assange did was justified. What uh, Jeremy Hammond did was justified. Um, and then the Brandon um, guy, the anonymous guy, what what they did was what all these whistleblowers have done is justified. Because essentially, when the state, when when the if these laws are laid down for a particular reason, then even if we don't necessarily agree with them, we have to obey them to a certain point. But when those laws begin to uh, begin to affect us, when they begin to you know take away our rights and harm us, basically, that's when it that's when it becomes justified. Therefore, that's when disobeying the law does become justified. So that's one of the things that I like to bring up, that little philosophical nature that I like to bring up. Um, so it, it's, and I believe it, it's a very logical, it's a very, um, it, it's a very logical argument. It's a very, and I think it's a very uh, important argument to, to make. And the fact, so, yeah, the fact that Edward Snowden gets to, you know, will, might soon be able to walk freely amongst the European countries without threat of extradition would be quite, quite funny. I think it's also quite funny that the U.S. government's gotten so butthurt over it, saying, you know, well, we don't see it that way. We think that he needs to face the crime, his crimes. We think he's a traitor. Yeah, well, the EU seems to think otherwise, and that's why they're giving you a big fuck you, because, well, frankly, the fact that you've also spied on them probably doesn't help your case either, any, at all, because, uh, you know, it makes you look even more like a dick than you already are, and the U.S. government's already a pretty big dick when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to human rights, when it comes to, you know, its idea that it has this right to fucking control everything and everybody and it doesn't I mean one of the founding principles about democracy is that people have the, have you know freedom and you know when you begin to infringe upon their freedom do they not have the right to let other people know their freedoms are being infringed do they not have a right to try to take back the freedom 
You know, even the illustrious Thomas Jefferson said something along the lines of, uh, or not Thomas Jefferson, was it Thomas? No, Ben Franklin, that said uh, uh, that anybody that gives up a, a little bit of secure, um, a little bit of liberty for security deserves neither. And I believe that to be a very true statement. Anybody that's willing to basically give up their rights, give up their liberty, give up their freedoms, you know, f f you know, just because their institution told them it's a matter of national security and then doesn't elaborate any further on it, yeah, if you just blindly go with that, then you deserve neither. You deserve neither security nor liberty. And the fact that, the, and I would be more inclined to accept the more security measures and even give up my own essential liberty if there was a legitimate reason for that. If there was a legitimate cause that would even, you know, be inclined to sway me to fight for said cause, to, you know, actually explain the situation to me, logically setting out bullet points and numbers and everything like that then I might be more persuaded to lean towards your position. But when you basically give me bullshit analysis or basically just tell me it's a matter of national security, you don't need to know it, well, then that's when I basically am just like, well, then fuck you. I'm not going to listen to you, and I don't think that what you're doing is, is right because it sounds kind of fucking shady. So... It's, you know, we could beat around the bush on this all night. And, of course, there's people out there that probably want to call me a traitor and want to call me un-American. And, you know what? Blow me. Um, but, yeah, it's the whole fact that that Snowden is basic that Snowden has basically received this sort of, you know, breath of fresh air. And the fact that he can, uh, <laughs> that the U.S. government's gotten so really butthurt over it and basically shitting their pants because the EU is saying, look, what you're doing is kind of wrong. You should just kind of, like, drop it. And in all intents, intents and purposes, the U.S. government really should just drop the charges and drop it all together. Oh, and free Chelsea Manning, by the way, and uh, Jeremy Hammond. And that Bradley, uh, that Brandon guy, and uh, Julian Assange. Anyway, um, but we'll just start with Snowden, I guess. Because um, essentially, yeah, you should just kind of drop it. I mean, I've always said, for one of the biggest things of all, Europe is more democratic than the United States is. That should not be fucking obvious. And frankly, we could learn a lot from Europe when it comes down to our cr needing criminal justice reform. Let's look to Europe. Our health care, we should look to Europe. When it comes to education, like free tuition, look to Europe. They are examples of this new age of, you know, sort of, you know, bourgeois democracy, frankly. But they're, but basically this, they're somebody to look at as an example. Because they are setting an example. You know, Donald Trump always, you know, BSs about how we can make America great again. Yeah, well, privatizing it and doing nothing, you know, for, you know, privatizing everything and doing nothing else to actually solve the problems of, of the state is not actually going to really do anything. In fact, all it's going to do is cripple us more and, frankly, lead us further down the road to fascism. Actually, Frankly, anything that, that Trump or Carson or anybody that's in the Republican Party wants to do is going to lead us to fascism. But the point is, is that we can learn from we can learn from Europe and some of their policies. That's how we can actually make America great again. That's actually how we can start. You know, you know, if you want to save your bourgeois democracy and you want to save your illustrious capitalism. Then you might want to look to Europe, which, by the way, everyone likes to call social Europe being European countries being socialist. No, they're social democrats. They're reformists. They're fucking liberals. But at least they are attempting to try to save the system that they fucking believe in. And this is coming from a person with a Marxist perspective. So you know, it's the whole idea that you 
that the U.S. can do so much in in trying to look to Europe as for an example to make its country great again. And another way you can start making your country great again is by quit go this war, this crappy war on whistleblowers like you've been fighting a war on drugs. It's not going to work. It's not going to end up very it's not going to end very well for your regime. So again, drop the charges against Snowden. You know, free manning even too, but drop the charges against Snowden and just accept that the world thinks that you're one big giant asshole. I'm NorCal Mick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace.